Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. Reprogram your lawyer bot today. It's okay, they're not really people. And today it is time for episode 50 of my Paradise Killer Let's Play, which hopefully will be the final episode. And so, without any further ado, let's dive back into the ongoing proceedings of the Trial of the Millennium. Paradise Killer. Welcome back, Investigator. So if I remember correctly, we should have two or three more seals to examine the murder itself, which should be open and shut, and of course, k hacks being missing. But before I jump into that, I do actually want to just say, hey, on day of recording, guess what? It's my birthday, or more accurately, the anniversary of my instantiation on this orbital platform. So that means for once I can guilt-free request that you like and subscribe, and maybe even check out my Patreon. Anyway, that's that out of the way, let's actually start playing. K-Hax is the Syndicate's master craftsman and designer of the Second Holy Seal that protects the Council. He has not been seen for a number of days. Our craftsman K-Hax is missing. Was he the victim of a crafted tragedy? I think that was a bit forced. He disappeared a number of days ago. Strange for a Syndicate member, but suspicious because he crafted the Second Holy Seal. Did someone try and obtain that secret from him? Investigator, do you know what happened to k -Hax? He's dead, lying on the rocks of the coast of the island. Dead? The fangs of death grip this island so tightly. How could this happen? Investigator, please review your case file and confirm who you wish to accuse. I mean, I don't really have to think about it. There's a bunch of evidence, quote unquote, towards Crimson Acid, but that's just ev evidence of their complex involvement. Although, she did admit to having manipulated the secret of the key out of him, but it's obviously Yuri who killed him. Yuri is the one who prevented people from seeing the corpse, and it's Yuri's ring that was on the corpse's body. It's difficult to frame him with his ring. I believe Yuri is behind the disappearance. Want to save me some trouble here and cooperate, Yuri? I'm not going down without a fight, freak. You need to prove it. K-Hax's dead body was clutching Yuri's ring. How do you know it belongs to Yuri? Lydia confirmed it. Yuri had apparently lost it. In this case, he lost it in the hand of a murder victim. K-Hax had it in a death grip. I believe he pulled it off in the struggle when he knew he was going to die. He held onto it in death to give us a clue. Oh wow, that's such a speculation. That's a total rage. Someone is trying to frame me. They stole my ring and planted it at the scene. Is there any evidence that the ring had been planted? None. The fist was gripping it tightly. If it had been planted, it would have had to have been done before rigor mortis set in. You people are out of your minds. This wasn't me. Present your evidence. Construct a truth. There are drag marks leading away from K-Hax's workshop. I believe Yuri killed him to get the key to the second seal and tried to hide his body. Those could have come from anywhere. This is a farce. We were told not to include speculation. The, the evidence of the drag marks is only evidence that the corpse was dragged from his house and thrown off the cliff. There's no evidence with regards to the drag marks that it is Yuri who's involved. Like, that's evidence relevant to the case, but it doesn't tie Yuri to it in any way. Like, I 100% believe he's the man what done it, but that is kind of spurious. Yuri shut down the boat rides around the island on the same day k -Hax went missing. Yuri picked a bad place to dump the body and needed to make sure it wouldn't be found. Yuri. Shutting down the boats is one of my duties. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Why do it early? Who cares about the boats? They're only there for citizens to try and block out the mundanity of their existence for a few minutes. I shut them down early. So what? I was getting work done. Present your evidence. I have nothing else. The truth shines like the moon on a cloudless night. Was this part of your orders as well, Yuri? Fine, I got the key for the second seal for her. k -Hax was an unfortunate casualty. This is the ravings of someone deceived by a god that's been caught out. We'll get to you later. And you got it by force? 
It wasn't supposed to be like that. I offered him a council seat and hoped he'd turn. We fought and I smashed him with a tool he had lying around. How did you get the key from him? His laptop was unlocked. It wasn't hard to find. I copied the file, dumped his body and left. Nonsense. I have considered your truth, ruminated on the implications, soaked in the facts, steeped in the leaves of veracity. Oh my god, I fall for this every time and start reading it out before I realise that it's just the same one again. There is no jury here. I must leave it to the impartial sword of justice within me to stab through the heart of the lies and let the blood of truth flow. You know, for someone who insists on being completely impartial, I've got to say that... Judge really seems to relish these, uh, these monologues. It's honestly the most characterful thing about any of these characters. Yuri is guilty. I mean, he did, he literally admitted it, so. I mean, he did literally admit it, so that's, that's not such a, an amazing turnaround. You know what I do want to save? The second holy seal. The council constructed a doorway to a plateau in space. The dreadful monuments there are used to open the second holy seal. I love the way that this game uses such grandiose language. It'll describe dread monuments and, and terrifying space-time continuums. And then you, you go there and it's like three small black obelisks and a rotating gif of a star field. <laughs> Lady Love dies. What is the second seal and how was it breached? Take us for a holiday to the land of truth. Let us sip cocktails of facts on the beach of justice. Fun coincidence, because it's my birthday, I've set aside my, my usual cup of uh, engine coolant that I use to keep my CPU nice and cool, and instead sipping a delicious raspberry mojito. With the help of K-Hacks, the council constructed a puzzle-based monument system on a plateau on a desolate planet beyond our solar system. The door in the council building acts as a portal to this antique part of space. The obelisks on the beach provide the solution to the puzzle and are activated using K-Hax's key. Or Starlight? The key carries a protocol which handshakes with the obelisk nightmare computer. Starlight can crack it. Investigator, please review your case file and confirm who you wish to accuse. I suppose, now that I think about it... Wait, hang on, Lydia. And... Sam Daybreak. Now that's interesting. Why are they separated here? <laughs> They've been considered a single unit up until this point. Um, but I mean, we, all of the evidence points towards Lydia. She's the one who did the rappelling gear. It was her car that only she is allowed to use that was at the scene. We know that her computer connected to the things. A space helmet Space helmet has her like good, good girl stink all over it, um, to borrow a questionable phrase from Tumblr that I've been seeing lately. So it's pretty obviously, Lydia, pretty obviously Lydia Daybreak, although, again, she's a part of the big conspiracy. I'm still not sure whether it's even possible for me to be wrong. Like, if I accuse someone spuriously, can I convince them? Or will... can I convince Judge? Like, how malleable is this system? Can someone be declared guilty or innocent based on which evidence I present? Can I pick someone who I know didn't do it and frame them? Or can I pick someone I know did do it and then be told that I was uh, that I was wrong, that judge does not believe me because I did not get the right evidence? Like, it's kind of curious and I'll never know because I 100%ed this game. <laughs> I believe Lydia went through the seal. Is this a joke, LD? Present your evidence, construct a truth. All of this stuff she basically just denied that she had any relevancy for. I think the remote access is the most important piece. The obelisk nightmare computer had been accessed remotely using a wireless device, presumably from the clifftop. There's a clear vantage point and using remote access allows you to obscure the login. Present your evidence. I found Lydia's tablet rammed down a drain. It contains an email with a file and that file is the key to the second seal obelisks. Do you have any idea who the sender was? Witness. In addition, Crimson told me that she managed to obtain the key from k -Hacks on behalf of Witness. That's a revelation, investigator. It wasn't relevant to the k -Hacks prosecution at the time. Multiple parties were out to secure the key to the second seal. So Witness got the key and passed it to Lydia. I believe so. Mrs. Daybreak, do you have anything to say? 
I don't know what Eldie's talking about. I never saw what that message was. Do you have proof that she used it? Present your evidence. Overlooking the obelisk computer is a cliff with tire tracks. Lydia is the only one on the island with a car. Oh, come on, LD. That's circumstantial. We used to hang out all over the islands in my car. On the clifftop overlooking the obelisks is a scratched out sketch in the dirt of the puzzle solution. I believe Lydia used the key remotely, sketched the solution, and then breached the second seal. And I found a hidden space helmet that smells of Lydia's perfume. The council used helmets to breathe in space while they traversed the second seal. Whoever went through the second seal would also need one. You're only linking it to Lydia by her perfume. Any of the council could have used it previously. Lydia's perfume is a unique blend. Only she has the recipe, so no one else could have used it with this helmet. Isn't that right, Lydia? I don't know what to tell you, LD. Someone's trying to set me up with that. I have a unique blend of a perfume, but maybe someone got hold of it to frame me. Did you find any evidence of this? No. Present your evidence. It's kind of interesting that I can say stuff and Judge will say, is there any evidence that it didn't happen? But you can't prove a negative. <laughs> like, I was never given the opportunity to investigate whether or not Lydia's, like... I, I, her flat's not on the island anymore, I guess. You can't go to her place and check and see if it was maybe broken into or whatever. We don't bother to investigate any of that, but she's going to get damned by it anyway, I think. But then she'll confess because that's what they've been doing all along. I, I kind of hate how formulaic this is, honestly. What about Lydia's alibi? Tell me about Lydia and Sam's alibi. Lydia told me she was at the Paradise Gates with Sam. They started the warm-up sequence and were waiting there while the murder happened. The nightmare computer logs on the gate confirm this. The warm-up sequence was started at 23.57. Have you got anything that contradicts this? As it happens, an alibi for last night is irrelevant. The crimes began a number of days ago. What do you mean? I have found evidence which suggests that the Daybreaks were involved with this crime, but their involvement did not occur last night. They breached the Holy Seals to sow the seeds of the crime two days ago. The crime was not one of opportunity. An opportunity was crafted and required prior planning. All evidence I present against them must be taken in this context. Whatever happened last night had the groundwork laid by the Daybreaks two days ago. What is this evidence? Trust me, Judge, when we get to it, we'll cover it. The truth is a meal, all ingredients need to be present. I would not do this for anybody else, but there is a reason I called the investigation freak out of exile. Again, who, whose justice are we talking about here? I feel like um, I feel like I'm in a dream where I've been assigned the role of a lawyer, but in a but in a law system I don't understand. This is absurd. The court trusts you, but the court shouldn't trust an individual investigator. I'm just as capable of being corrupt as anybody else. <laughs> You're supposed to be impartial justice. What the hell? This isn't right. Yeah, I agree. Come on, LD. After all this time, how can you suspect us? We were waiting to leave paradise. This is a joke, LD. You've taken some facts and made a lie, not a truth. You've twisted the world into a new image. You are wrong, LD. Do not question my decision when you were within the domain of justice. We have stopped at the highway service station of truth. Lydia and Sam's alibi is broken. I have considered your truth. A truth proves Lydia guilty. You have been a faithful and devoted member of our glorious syndicate for so long. Why would you turn your back on us now? The penalty for this crime is death. You will be executed by a bullet of justice from the gun of truth. This is the end of your eternal road trip, Lydia. Why? God damn it, LD. I'm dead, right? Damn it all to hell. The punishment is execution. It wasn't supposed to work out this way. This was designed to be unsolvable. I thought you'd never bo I never thought you'd be brought back. I helped so I could leave these islands behind. I don't care about Perfect 25. Okay, you know what? They really had me going for a second there. I thought that maybe I was wrong and I, I had done this incorrectly. I think that the lack of any red herrings is a real problem. Maybe if you come into this half assed and only having found half of the information available in the game, you would be mistaken, but like, it's just there. If you look, if you look in every location, you find all the things and then, like if some of the side crimes had turned out to be red herrings, and if there had been a lot of like red herring evidence, this would have been a much harder decision. And maybe I would have been wrong about some of these people, but like, I feel like I'm just going through the motions. It feels ironclad every step of the way. Help who? 
witness. He said if I helped, I could leave the syndicate. Help with what? Deliver a cargo. I don't know what it was. Heavy as hell, though. Almost cracked the axles. I had to get it into the council building a couple days ago. What was the cargo? No idea. I didn't ask questions. I just got it inside the council building. It was a black security crate. What about the other seals? God damn it. Yeah, those two. I assume Sam helped you? No, LD. It was just me. Interesting. I did. I did predict that. I really doubt that. You were going to leave the syndicate by yourself. It's okay, Lydia. I can't live here without you, can I? If you're guilty, I'm guilty, aren't I? We promised each other too much, didn't we? That can't be for nothing, can it? We work together, for witness. If Lydia's going to die, I want to go with her. Heaven sounds better than an island without her, doesn't it? It was two days ago, LD. I don't know what happened in that building last night, but we were in there two days ago. We followed witness's plan and opened all the seals. We took his crate and... We took his crate through and hid it in the penthouse. The crime to end all crimes set up two days ago. We have a conspiracy, love dies. There is no conspiracy. The guilty are trying to take me down with them, jealous of my righteousness in the face of their heresy. That's a bag of crap. You promised me and Sammy that we'd be able to leave the syndicate if we helped. You know we shouldn't. You knew we shouldn't. You knew whatever we... We knew we shouldn't. We knew whatever you were planning would be an atrocity. We've been here too long. There are only so many millennia that can be endured, aren't there? The world needs to be seen. Islands kill the mind, don't they? The truth becomes clearer. Who opened the third seal? The third seal is a blood lock coded to the blood of council members. I need to find out who opened the lock on the night of the murder. Someone breached the third holy seal and took a step away from innocence towards crime. Please bring us a meal of truth so that we may gorge on justice. Lady Love dies. What is the third seal? A blood lock that's coded to council members. To get through it, you either need council blood in your body or a sample to trick the lock. But we have a confession. Lydia and Sam breached the seals. Is that the whole truth or does another truth lurk here? I'm not sure, actually. I really wish I could check my... I really wish I could check my, uh... My laptop and see what Starlight has to say about it. I believe the evidence I had pointed uh, only to Sam Daybreak. So I think I'm gonna say no. That is the only truth. The blood lock was bypassed with a sample of Kafka Memory's blood. Doom Jazz caught Sam snooping around in his clinic. He discovered that a sample of council blood had been taken and that blood was Kafka Memories. Sam has a secret whiskey distillery in the dead zone. I found a medical refrigeration unit there. Inside was a blood vial with a scratched off label. The only letter I could make out is K, presumably for Kafka. Kafka memory logged into the blood lock two days ago without the rest of the council. Sam managed to trick the blood lock and breach the seal. A truth is revealed. A truth is known. A truth proves Sam guilty. The truth is known. That was a nice quick one. <laughs> So normally around this point of recording time, I would uh, call an end to an episode because I aim for 20 minutes, but I think I'm going to make this a bumper one because we're so close to finishing. There's only two cases left to go, I think. And that's going to mean that we can finally finish this game and I can move on to the next game that I will be let's playing for you all. So let's try and finish it up today, even if it does make for a bumper episode. Who breached the fourth holy seal? The fourth holy seal requires godliness to get through. I need to find out how someone tricked the seal. The fourth holy seal lays deep within the dense fog of obtruse mysteries this island has to offer. Lady Love dies, what is the fourth holy seal? It requires godliness to pass through. Godliness, how do the council pass through it? Montserrat owned a piece of crying grudge's flesh in a pendant. That allowed him to open the seal. This means that the council could only enter with Montserrat. But we have a confession. Lydia and Sam breach the seals. Is that the whole truth, or does another truth lurk here? Oh yeah, there's more truth. There is more truth to find. Who breached the fourth seal and found themselves at the scene of carnage? Shit, I'm actually not sure, because Carmelina took the fl flesh and put it on Danai Angate. But 
Actually, I think it was, it might have been Sam. Because then all of the seals were already breached when the others tried to go through, right? But Witness took the flesh to give it to Sam in the first place. Denai Ongate had the flesh to let him get through the fourth seal, but I think there were two plans going on at the same time, right? Witnesses and Carmelinas. The game doesn't seem to have allowed me to present that possibility yet, but that's the only thing that makes sense to me, because why else did the two people prepare two murder, murder plots, both separately taking flesh? I'm really not sure who to accuse here, actually. Why would Sam have a lump of it if it... Well, we know that they we know that they put the, the chest in there, so they must have had a lump of gold flesh to break that seal. And as far as we know, Danai Ongate was only ever allowed out once, which means it would have been after the seal was already broken. But that doesn't explain why the seal went crazy and became busted. Hmm. Maybe that, maybe that only happened when Danai Ongate went through it. Maybe they didn't break that seal, they simply left it uh, intact as it should have been. So I guess... I guess I'll say sound day break for now. Like, my issue here is that I don't know what the law is. Is breaching the fourth holy seal figuring out how to do it and providing the means? Or is breaching the holy seal actually walking through it? I know Carmelina didn't breach the seal, although she did have the flesh to allow Tanaya and Gate to do it. Because um, she didn't have a corridor... A secret corridor behind that point, Nyangate made one on his way out. So it's between these two, and I'm not sure what the game will consider the correct answer here, because I don't know what law they've broken. Sam Doe the one who walked through it, Witness is the one who figured out how to do it. But we know that we know that he went through the seal, so it kinda has to be him, right? He's already admitted to having gone through. Or well, the two of them have. I believe Sam infiltrated the seal. We already have a confession from the daybreaks. They went through all of the seals two days ago. Sam admitted to breaching the third and fourth seal. Tell me how he did it. I discovered a safe in Sam's bar containing a lump of strange flesh. This was god flesh carved from crying grudge. A safe containing god flesh. What is going on? Sammy has a secure safe in the storeroom of his bar. I cracked the code and found god flesh. I am harrowed by this revelation. Sam told me that the godflesh he had in his safe was being stored for witness who said it was for the good of the syndicate. Sam claims not to know what it was for when he was given it. I went to see Crying Grudge and he told me that witness carved a lump of his flesh off. A god was defiled. What is this heresy? Crying Grudge has some stories to tell. His flesh was used to breach the fourth holy seal. Unthinkable. Sam got through the fourth holy seal, putting him outside the crime scene. A truth is revealed, a truth is known, a truth proves. Sam guilty. Bizarre truths, dangerous facts, the fear of mystery. Why can't I accuse both of them? Come on. The mystery of the dead killer demon. Demonic invasions occur most islands, and the marshals hunt the demons down. What the hell is one doing inside the council penthouse? Lady Love dies, you have a case file about a killer demon inside the penthouse. The truths in play grow bizarre, like an old tree grows gnarled. A killer demon? What killer demon? I found a dead killer demon. Yeah, we've established that. There aren't supposed to be any demons on the island. A killer demon in the council penthouse. What was it doing there? It has the blood of several council members on its claws. It was involved in the murder of the council. It appears that it burst out of a hidden security crate and attacked the council. How did it die? Montserrat shot it during the murder. There was a Fukanda bullet that came from Montserrat's gun in its head. Anything to do with your cargo, Lydia? Black security crate? Yep. Well, that's it. It really contained a killer demon? Looks like it. That makes Witness guilty. Working in the light of the gods makes me guilty of nothing. You need to prove any accusations in court. He's right, love dies. Is he? I haven't proved half the things I've said. I just get people to confess. The dark deduction of the dead demon's destruction is for another case file. The truth about where it came from must be dredged from the Swamp of Mystery first. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to accuse Witness here, because he's the one who set up this whole thing, and this is how I get him involved uh, if, I invo if I talk about Carmelina's stuff later on. 
it is possibly due to Henry that they're here, but he Henry only brute brought demons here as part of other shit going on. Interesting that I can't accuse Yuri of ultimately being at fault because he's the one who gave books to Henry, which is how the demons got here. But let's go with Witness because I want him to be involved. <laughs> The righteous man transgressed. Witness is the origin of the killer demon. Laughable. I'm a holy man, not a sinner. I found the killer demon along with a demonic containment crate in the penthouse. A demonic containment crate? It is some kind of incarceration device that imprisons a demon with holy restraints. There are bindings and manacles covered in holy wards. These restrained the killer demon and kept it contained. Why? It was likely placed there ahead of time as a means to kill the council. Present your evidence. There is a secret demonology lab hidden within the dead zone. The lock on it is coded to witness's blood vial. That is an old panic room. I never used it for demonology. Someone planted that evidence. The lab has the same crates as the one in the penthouse. During the extermination 10 years ago, witness captured a killer demon and contained it. A heretical ac accusation. How could I have done that? There is a tunnel running from Sam's bar to the dead zone. Witness has been seen using it to access the dead zone. Seen by who? A sinner that would besmirch the name of a holy man? Present your evidence. Carmelina confessed to me that Witness maintained a secret demonology lab on the island in an abandoned bunker. Lies, lies, lies. This is a persecution of the holy. Present your evidence. Construct a truth. It's not like he gives an alternate explanation. Last night at Wit... Last night at midnight, Witness made a phone call to an unknown number. That number matches the number on a receiver attached to the demonic containment crate inside the penthouse. The receiver was designed to open the crate when it received a call. This would let the killer demon out, presumably to attack the council. A ridiculous accusation. Why would I want to release a killer demon? Demons are abominations. Why not explain how the phone number you dialed matches the receiver? I can't explain a lie fabricated by a sinner. Can you prove this accusation? I verified the data by using Witness's personal phone and a comms tower. He made the call and the receiver picked up, unlocking the crate. Lies. We also have the testimony of Lydia and Sam. People who face the death sentence and have nothing to lose. They can say whatever they want. There's no consequence when you stand over the precipice of execution. Another typo made it through the uh, proofing process there, I notice. He's right, investigator. Present your evidence. I have nothing more. I have considered your truth. A truth is revealed. A truth is known. A truth proves. Witness guilty. You have overseen so many wonderful islands. Why turn your back on us now? Such is the burden of a martyr. You may think me a sinner, but I work for holy purpose. You have all strayed from the path and the gods weep. I hope they weep for you as well. What was the play here? The killer demon was placed in the penthouse as a remote weapon. The security crate was hidden in the room. When the killer demon was released, it attacked everyone in the room on sight. That sounds risky. I don't know if it was meant to kill all of the council. Just the presence of the killer demon would be enough to scare the council. A dreadful truth. At this juncture, I think it's worth noting that I actually had to take a break and record this in two parts, because, uh, it's long as hell. So if there's an abrupt drop in quality between the video prior to this point and this point now, that's either due to my setup having changed slightly between earlier today and now, or the fact that I have traded my mojito for a cosmopolitan, and then a gin and tonic, and now a whiskey sour. So, let's bring it all home on this, the birthday of the year. The crime to end all crimes. Last night, the council were murdered as they birthed the next island through meditation. Was it a power play or killing for kicks? Who did it and why? The crime to end all crimes. The murder in the night. The paradise killer. Who killed the council? The truth is aged like fine whiskey. How does the whiskey on this island taste? Pour us a glass of truth so that we may sip on a vintage blend of justice. Honestly, Judge sounds like me when I'm drifting and it's delightful to me. 
probably because they actually have a character that's not a sort of a broad strokes archetype. I want to know who held the knife. If a killer was set up by a mastermind, we will deal with that later. I want to know who gripped a knife of murder in their palm of guilt. Show us the ultimate truth. Well, I mean, we know that it was both of them. We know that it was the killer demon and it was Danai on Gate, but we have already talked about the killer demon having done the crime uh, with Judge, so I assume that that sort of flag has been tripped within the game's system. Um, and so if I want to bring up Danai on Gate, now's the time to do it. He was... He, uh... He... <laughs> he had a knife covered in their blood. I suppose, conceivably, he you know, show, showed up, saw that the, the demon had killed everybody, um, and got shot and never actually stabbed anyone and, I don't know, put, put blood on the knife just to prove to his mother that he tried or something, but that's a weird speculation to make and Occam's Razor would suggest that, no, the, both of them just did stabbings. It's frustrating that I can't tag multiple people to declare as the, as the, the person who did the killings. Or for any of these crimes that I can't tag multiple people. On the other hand, Deny on Gate is dead already, so I have nothing to lose by accusing him. I'm not getting tired of that uh, anvil, I'll tell you that. Deny on Gate is the Paradise Killer. Who is Deny on Gate? A mysterious killer hidden on the island. A tantalizing truth. The secret lies within the architect's alibi. <laughs> this is nonsense. The investigation freak is fabricating a lie. I had nothing to do with the dreadful events of last night. I was at Witness's apartment all night until we were summoned by judge for the crisis meeting. That's true. The building logs confirm her entry time at 9pm and her exit after the murder. Are you able to disprove it? Witness stepped out onto his balcony for five minutes to take a call from Aikiko. Carmelina was unaccounted for in those five minutes. It takes more than five minutes to get to the council building, commit a crime, and return, doesn't it? And the building logs would have registered her returning. That's true. When Carmelina architected the island, she constructed a network of transdimensional corridors that allow her to move across the island in an instant. That is absolute nonsense. Secret transdimensional corridors. Are you serious? Is the truth really hiding in these bizarre facts? I found Carmelina's son hidden in a vault on the mountain. His name was Danai Ungarte, and he gave me this key which unlocks the corridors. From this vault, the corridors connect to Witness's apartment and to the council building. In the five minutes Witness was out on his balcony taking a call, Carmelina could have used a corridor to get to the council building. This is a shocking revelation. Can you prove it? Starlight can verify my movements. User LLD travelled between the exits of these corridors in 0.021% of the time it would take on foot. This is all a lie the investigator cooked up. I have verified Starlight's data. Lady Love Dies is telling the truth. Why not create a corridor straight into the penthouse? I don't believe you can make a corridor if you don't know the destination. Carmelina's never been to the penthouse, so she couldn't make a corridor to it. There is a corridor leading from outside the penthouse back to Danai Ongato's vault. I believe he inherited his mother's power to make corridors and escaped back to his room by making a corridor. I never expected anything like this, Love Dice. Why not? You're all blood sorcerers! Carmelina had a window of opportunity and used it to travel via her secret corridors, get Danai and Gate, and deposit him at the council building. You live in a space bubble! Carmelina went into isolation 25 years ago. Why? No one knows. <laughs> She claimed it was to work on a new project, but no one in the Syndicate ever saw what the result was. I think she had a child in secret. Who's the father? Ai's Kiwami. He and Danai Ongate have the same blood. Had? Ai's took his own life years ago, and Danai Ongate killed himself when I found him. Why? We'll get to that later, Judge. This sounds like a conspiracy. Architect Carmelina's alibi is broken. Present your evidence. Construct a truth. Well, I mean, he did say he did it. Before he killed himself, Danai Ongate told me he killed the council. 
He was given this mission by his mother, Carmelina. She engineered a killer. His room was bare besides knife combat training equipment. These trials are over. This is a big lie. No, it isn't. Danai Ongati confessed everything. Present your evidence. I found a knife covered in the council's blood on Danai Ongate's corpse. Why isn't my why doesn't my laptop record everything I do? Like it confirms my movements, right? Why doesn't it have a microphone going all of the time to record the conversations I have with unexpected murder baby box baby murder boys? Uh who, you know, conveniently confess to doing the crime to end all crimes. Um like It'd be sure, be sure it'd be convenient if I had a if I had a uh, an audio recording of that event, you know, much like my my GPS movements. The lacerations match his blade. All of the wounds on the victims are clean. The victims were sliced apart with fatal wounds. Danai Ogate moved quickly and cleanly. The penthouse is covered in blood. He hit major arteries, disemboweled victims, and carved his way through the room. The council were coming out of meditation, and he struck them when they could barely fight back. Tanayangate's blood is at the scene. He was shot by Montserrat and left blood splatter in the penthouse. This proves that he got through the seals. Leader Montserrat shot him. Presumably in self-defense, Tanayangate attacked as the council's meditation finished. Montserrat was attacked, but as he was, he fired his gun, wounding Tanayangate. Montserrat was growing paranoid. One of the manifestations of this seems to have been carrying a weapon. I mean, are you really paranoid if they genuinely are all out to get you? All but two of the other remaining inhabitants of the island seem to have been at fault here. I believe Leader Montserrat was the most awake while the others were still coming around from their meditation. Danayongate got to him, but as he attacked, Montserrat shot. Danayongate fled after the bullet went through him. And Danayongate fled bleeding. His blood's outside the penthouse. Create he created a transdimensional corridor and escaped back to his lair where I found him bleeding out. He had to have gone through the seals to get into the penthouse. Danai Ongate inherited his mother's power to create corridors. He's sloppy, but he can do it. He stumbled out of the penthouse and made a corridor to escape with. He was bleeding badly and his blood trail... He was bleeding badly and his blood trail his route home. Another typo. I believe you need to know the start and end points of a corridor when you create one. Carmelina couldn't create a corridor to the penthouse because the interior of the council building isn't... is a closely guarded secret. I don't think Carmelina knew Danai could create corridors. He was supposed to die in the locked room at the end of the island. Her plan was solid, except for two wild cards, Danai ability and my return from exile. I have nothing further to present. I have considered your truth, ruminated on the implic- Oh, I'm falling for it again! The secret killer is the truth. A truth is revealed, a truth is known, a truth proves Danai guilty. I guess he won't deny on Gate way with this. The tendrils of conspiracy snake around us. Starlight has a case file that will help us chop back those tendrils and expose the truth hiding within. Review the evidence, investigator. Oh, interesting. So this is all the evidence that we've gathered recently to put together Carmelina's conspiracy, which I suppose Witness must have been a part of. The game seems to insist that it's all Carmelina's conspiracy. There's been no opportunity for me to say what if there were two conspiracies at the same time. Which is kind of interesting. So I suppose I suppose the idea is that it is just redundancy, you know? Um, they might have survived a demon attack, but not also a murder baby. So I guess that makes sense. Anyway, let me give me a second to catch up on these. Having had a look at this, not much of it is anything we didn't already know, but it does kind of sound like Witness is almost treated as both guilty and not guilty at the same time. Like, we know he's a part of this because he made the demon box and triggered it, but the way this is written implies that um, his involvement with Carmelina's alibi is not like willing or not knowing that he had no idea that she slipped out while he was doing stuff. I suppose that's just in case you have part of the evidence and not the other parts of the evidence, it's written ambiguously so as not to give it away. Can you explain this conspiracy? 
can you refine a truth from the ore of crime? I believe Carmelina initiated a conspiracy to kill the council last night. Well, no, she didn't initiate the conspiracy last night. She did that long ago. At least, like, 25 years, if we consider uh, Tanayo and Gate to be, always have been a part of it. She created Perfect 25 and wanted to make sure it was hers. Carmelina is being punished for her father's crimes. The Silence family were barred from ever being on the council as a part of his punishment. Crimson told me that Carmelina's put in a number of motions to join the council that have all been denied. She's a genius architect who's helped the Syndicate birth a potentially perfect island. Does she feel she deserves a seat on the council? She knows the 25th island will be perfect. Is she worried she won't get credit? Witness testified that he's worried Carmelina has changed. Maybe she expects more reward for her craft. Carmelina had a secret child, Denayongate. She kept him hidden in trans-dimensional corridors that she built with her skills as the architect. Denayongate's father was Ais Kiwami. The council blood from his father would allow Denayongate to breach the blood lock on the third seal. Carmelina presumably learned that Henry had been fathered illegitimately by Eyes and kept a secret. That meant she could get a secret child as well. Secret baby. Secret baby. When I found Denayongate, he told me his mission had been to kill the council. He had a knife slick with the blood of council members. He completed his mission. Denayongate would birth a new syndicate, dying for Carmelina's sins. Carmelina took a lump of flesh from the god, crying grudge to get through the fourth seal. She fused this to deny on Gate's body. Yuri confessed to being recruited by Carmelina. Yuri got the key to the second seal from K-Hax, under orders from Carmelina. I believe Yuri helped Henry obtain forbidden books on demonology. Okay, so... <sighs> this is incredibly frustrating. At no point are we allowed to actually assemble our own argument. We simply just go through everything we've found and it turns out to be everything we need. That's ridiculous. I'll probably talk about this later when I do a sort of a roundup during the credits, but it really bothers me that at no point are you actually allowed to like construct an argument. Obviously it would be difficult mechanically to design a system where that could work, but this is just literally just reading out every piece of information that I have. We already know all of this because we've already found this information. We're not even arranging it or putting it in order. I forgot to read that one, but I'm sure it's fine. Henry's possession called for an exorcism. Carmelina wanted Henry to kill Grace Bloodlines to give him a prior history of murder. When he didn't step up, Carmelina intervened and killed Grace herself. A demonically possessed citizen would be the perfect tool. I mean, yeah, but also there's an obvious conclusion there that she doesn't mention, which is that if you want to use demons in your plot, you probably don't want the exorcist around. I mean, if an architect has architecture powers, I assume an exorcist has demon-related sensational abilities? I mean, sense-related abilities, not abilities that are sensational, although maybe they're sensational as well. Considering that they're surprised by architecture powers, but not surprised by the blood sorcery or any of the other weird shit they deal with on a daily basis, who knows? Carmelina recruited Aikiko into her plan. Aikiko aided her by purposefully leaving Henry alone with Grace. Aikiko faked Henry's escape, putting a possible killer into play. Aikiko knew the first seal marshals would be killed and switched them to protect her beloved marshals. Carmelina's plan was achieved by using her trans-dimensional corridors. Her alibi looked perfect, but she knew Witness would leave the room when he got a call. She knew Aikiko would call at the right time and used that opportunity to slip out of Witness's apartment, get to Nyongate, and deliver her killer to the council building. Woof. That was mouthful. Do you have anything to say, architect? People would have nothing if it weren't for me. All these islands that you drift along on, all your tragic little lives, all given to you by me. I facilitate the syndicate, I craft your homes. I have never been rewarded for my work, never been on the council, always living to one side. Not even Perfect 25 got me the recognition I deserve. I don't expect the world, just some kind of reward to show what I did was worth it. Was this worth it? It would have been. You shouldn't have been called down. I'd crafted a perfect lie. 
How did you know you'd be made leader during the crisis? Okay, actually, one thing I think that is a neat detail there, I, don't, I can't tell if this is intentional, and based on my general opinion of the writing in this game, it's probably not. But Carmelina's obsession with her... Well, maybe it is Maybe it is purposeful, actually. It's not revolutionary or whatever, but, like, Carmelina's obsession with her Perfect 25, the final island that will actually be perfect for reals this time, honest, and the fact that we know it isn't, because we've already had the information a while back. Possibly even when we first met Grace Bloodlines. That Perfect 25 will be fucked up, uh, eventually, in some way or other. Just because demons can't be around as demons, they still will get sucked into the brains of uh, citizens. So, her obsession with what should have been a perfect lie, and her obsession with what should have been Perfect 25, she believes both are perfect, and so the abundant evidence that they're not perfect, i.e. we've just proven that it's false. You know, there's a kind of a synergy going on there. That's the irony. I didn't... I didn't expect Justice Incarnate to reverse the law and make me leader. So what was the play on the next island? When the chips are down, every one of the Syndicate is a coward and a sycophant. You all want your little bits of power and your little lives to carry on ticking. The next council would be scared, all seniority would be gone, and I would be the one who had crafted Perfect 25. I would make sure I had the throne. So her plan was actually even dumber than, like, the theoretical plan we had previously. And, you know, e even the game suggested that, that she would get made leader in the interim and then carry that over on the next island. My father was a victim, but treated like a criminal. He was executed by a coward. You people never appreciate what others do for you. The Grand Marshal would give you a loyal army to make sure of it. The plan failed. The truth is known. You arrogantly believed everyone would believe Henry, a citizen, was capable of breaching the Holy Seals and murdering the council. Ah, another little interesting little showing through of her prejudice there. Obviously a citizen would never be smart or clever or powerful enough to do that kind of thing. Justice is immune to arrogance. No, it's not. We've basically proved that throughout the purpose of- uh, throughout the course of this entire investigation. No, it's not. We've basically proved that throughout the entire course of this law proceeding. A hideous, heinous truth. A vile truth. Architect, you have been found guilty of conspiring to kill the council. Your punishment is death. The Onyxian claws of the conspiracy tear at the flesh of this island. I can feel the dreadful shadow of this conspiracy looming over us. Can you explain this conspiracy? Review the evidence, investigator. Wait, there's another one? Oh. So maybe I was right that it is too completely <laughs> coincidental um, plans that went off at the same time. But what doesn't make sense is Danayon Gate didn't have any means of bypassing the second seal, except for the fact that it was like... Wait, but this doesn't answer- the question of where those helmets came from in the first place is still unanswered, and that's the key to all of this, because nobody could con could cross the second seal without one anyway in the first place to set this stuff up. Danayongate would have either needed the key and a helmet, or a demon in his brain, in order to bypass the second seal. Because that seal wasn't- that's the only seal that wasn't left open, because it's still empty space and we still had to put the- put the code in to make it activate. Is that a plot hole, or is or did I miss something, or is that going to be explained eventually? That's going to drive me insane. I believe Witness initiated a conspiracy to kill the Council last night. Witness has become a fanatic. He's radicalised himself as a devoted servant of the gods. He believes the Syndicate has strayed from the Holy Mission, and I believe he wanted to put the fear of the gods into us. Monsterat was devolving into paranoia and was becoming a dictator. Witness has repeatedly voiced his opposition to Mons Witness has repeatedly voiced his opposition to Monserrat's plans for the next island, so Witness took matters into his own hands. Carmelina told me about Witness becoming rebellious against Monserrat's plans. Witness openly rejected Monserrat's plans to wipe certain events from history and tighten his grip over syndicate members. Witness has become obsessed with the idea of a cleansing tide of demons. Like the ancient Great Flood, he wants the Syndicate to be forced to start again. 
The key to Witness's plan was planting a killer demon inside the council penthouse. That demon would kill the council and he'd get away with it. Witness made a call at midnight to a demonic containment crate that had been hidden in the penthouse, unlocking it remotely and allowing it to start its attack. Witness had been experimenting in demonology in a secret bunker within the dead zone. He imprisoned the killer demon and later weaponized it. Sam has a secret tunnel running from his bar to the dead zone. Witness used that to subvert the security on the dead zone to get in. Witness recruited Lydia and Sam into his conspiracy by promising to let them leave the syndicate on the next island. Two ex-assassins are perfect tools. Witness got the demon containment crate into the council building by using Lydia. She rappelled down from the roof of the penthouse and took it in through the maintenance grate. Lydia went through the second seal on Witness's behalf. For the fourth seal, Witness took Godflesh from Crying Grudge to bypass the barrier. Lydia and Sam worked together to get the demonic crate through the seals and into the penthouse a few days before the murder. The plan isn't foolproof, there were too many variables. Pinning your hopes on a wild killer demon and believing it would not be traced back to you was foolish. No doubt the intention was a scare tactic more than anything else, put the fear of the gods into the council to enact change. You used to kill a demon as the messenger of angry gods to reshape the syndicate? The plan didn't have to be perfect to get what you wanted. All you needed was a catalyst for change. So yeah, it looks like my, my theory that I've had for a long time, that there were two different murder plots going on that happened to coincide, seems to be true. Except that, of course, Denai and Gate couldn't have gotten through the thing, but we're apparently not talking about that. On a day of horrible truths, this is one of the worst. Why, witness? I'm surrounded by sin and heresy. You are all focused on the islands and your own little ambitions. What about the gods? What about our holy mission? All but one of the pyramids sit empty and we have existed for millennia. We are an embarrassment to the gods. The syndicate needed rebuilding. And you would be the one to do it? The who is irrelevant. More important is the why and the how. Re-establish the priority in our faith. Resume our holy mission and bathe in the radiance of our gods. I must die a martyr. I tried. I really tried to do the work of our astral lords. It wasn't enough, though. The sin on this island was too great. I hope heaven is everything you want it to be. Witness to the end. You are found guilty of conspiring to kill- What was that? You are found guilty of conspiring to kill the council. The punishment is death. Oh shit, is this crashing? <gasps> no! Okay, no, we're all right. <laughs> that was bizarre. The Parlor of Justice has played host to the truths of the investigator. Were the truths as expected? Did esoteric knowledge reveal the truth or did it remain hidden in mystery? The investigator will become executioner and execute justice. Do I like have to manually shoot these people myself? Grand Marshal Aikiko 14, the verdict is... Execute. Did she need to shoot her four times in the abdomen? That feels... inefficient. Architect Carmelina, the verdict is... Execute. One thing I've, I've complained about this game all the way through, but one thing that I do have to admit about it is that it's stylish as hell when it wants to be. Crimson Acid. The verdict is... No crimes release. Dr. Doomjazz. The verdict is... Release. There's definitely a joke to be made here about him being... There's definitely a joke to be made here about the word release slamming down onto an image of this man in his sexy bathrobe glory. The accused, Henry Division. The verdict is... Release. What does that mean for him? Won't he just die when the island ends? The fairy woman, Lydia Daybreak. The verdict is... Execution.
How does Lady Love Dies feel about shooting her, her like oldest friend? Sam Daybreak. The verdict is... Also, what does it mean to shoot a skeleton to death? Witness to the end. The verdict is... Execute. Is this justice? Was justice served here? I feel like I've just killed fucking everybody. On the other hand, these are the lords of an extremely corrupt and cruel society who are happily murdering thousands of people in order to perpetuate their own existences, so probably I should kill all of them. Secretary Yuri Knight. The verdict is... Execute. The unforgiving spectre one last kiss. The verdict is... Release. The hidden killer deny on Gate. The verdict is... Execute. The bizarre killer demon. The verdict is... Execute. I love that the demon was on trial. He was dead before any of us got here. You've proven that Henry had nothing to do with the crime to end all crimes. He was nothing more than a pawn in a dreadful game of murder and secrecy. You have earned the title of Grand Investigator. Your weapon is unlocked. On the next island, you will reform the Paradise Psycho Unit. Island 24 is about to die. Island 25 awaits us. What island will it be? Are you happy with your truths? Did you get the convictions you wanted? You entered into a battle with the facts, the truths, and the suspects. Did you emerge victorious? This courtroom could only allow so many truths to emerge from their hiding places. Are there more to hunt? Probably not. If you believe that things are not as they seem, there is still a way to punish the guilty. Grand Investigator Lady Love Dies, I will leave you to execute justice at your discretion. Punish those that you deem guilty. Execution or exile are viable punishments. You may also let them go free. Please work for the best interests of Perfect 25. Thank you, Judge. It will be my honor to execute justice. Okay, so she's basically Judge, Jury, and Executioner now. She's basically Hyperspace Judge Dread. This is ridiculous. I don't think that's a sensible system to have. A single, in a single individual in a highly corrupt society is not exactly what you want to pin all hopes for justice on. Although I suppose all of the individuals who were agglomerated together to create this perfect avatar of perfect justice woven into the very fabric of the islands themselves, all of those individuals were drawn from the syndicate, so presumably the avatar of justice only thinks of justice from the point of view of the syndicate. When you are ready to wave goodbye to Island 24, do so from the rearview mirror in Lydia's car. The car will take you through Paradise Gates and to Perfect 25. Use it at your discretion. Those of you which have not been found guilty of destroying Paradise may leave and wrap up your business before we move to Perfect 25. A marshal shall take Henry back to his cell. Marshals will clear away the executed. They will not be remembered. They will not be honoured. This might be our actual first hint of the few, of the f alternate present, I guess, that hasn't required whiskey. Although, I have just finished my del my delicious whiskey sour, so perhaps it's I who've had the whiskey that's caused the alternate hyperspace other world visions this time. She completed the job. Was there more to do? The investigator always trusted her heart. She would decide if Paradise had been saved. We are on Perfect 25, so it must have been saved. Saved is not a binary state. Solving a crime doesn't mean the world is fixed. That's scary. It is. I hope she knew what she was doing. I'm sure she did. This is Lady Love Dies we're talking about. Well, is that it? Oh look, there's horrible bloodstains from where they were. So I suppose that means I'm free to go and explore the rest of the island in a uh, post-game sequence. I don't expect that there's going to be much for me to see. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've answered every mystery on the island. Although perhaps there will be some final conversations. God, this episode's going to be like an hour and a half when it's finished. This is awful. 
On the other hand, that seems like a good grand finale for a uh, for a series that took a, a whole year to do. Although, of course, I was only ever expecting it to take a couple of months. Hopefully, hopefully I won't have another year of constant health problems and hiatuses. Why is Doomchild's yachts sunk? Or is that someone else's yacht? Let's go see how he feels. Oh hey, there's a Shinji as well. Maybe there's tons of stuff. God, maybe there's like a whole post-game world to explore. Hey Doom. You sunk your boat. I always do, love dies. Send the old girl off at the end of the island. Time to move on. Fresh start. Embrace the future. Are you looking forward to the future, love dies? Something is still wrong here. I can feel it. An investigator's hunch. Is it now? What's wrong? Something you want to talk about? I I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to execute him. I don't think he did anything wrong. <laughs> I'll see you on the next island. We'll have a new yacht that needs christening, love dies. I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I should just execute them all just for being members of the syndicate, but I'm not sure that's I'm not sure that's a logic the game will understand. There definitely is something still wrong here, but I don't know if that's something I'm supposed to explore and figure out. Oh look, I can't go visit uh, the god either. Did you try using this jet ski? Don't answer that, I really don't care. I managed to get it to the top of the pyramid and back. Not sure I could do that again though. Laters. Cool. Are there any new items added, maybe? Not that I can see. Oh wait, there's one over there. I wonder what that is. Looks like it could be as far as on the other side of the island. But, uh, I'll be right back. Ah, it appears to have been a f another, uh, yet another secret final Shinji. Did you break these controls? So what if I did? Who cares? You found your truth for all the good it did anyone. Cool your jets and relax. It's the end of the island. Embrace oblivion, baby. I do feel like I should be allowed to save Shinji. Out of all of these motherfuckers, he's the only one I respect. I think maybe they've just added a Shinji everywhere that was a puzzle I could interact with. Hope you didn't want to use these valves. Someone broke them. Someone. Ah, uh, you got me. The investigation freak strikes again. I'm just having some fun, you know. You've done your job. The island's ending. Why not break some stuff? Anyway, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Definitely weird vibes on that guy. Also, it's a nice detail that a bunch of the music is slightly distorted and weird and squibbly now that we're exploring at the end. And of course the sky is falling apart. Anyway. Oh look, there's crows have started falling out of the sky as well. I'm really not kidding about it being the end of the world. There's a lot of really nice details to this final farewell sequence. Well, hello. Boy, this thing looks like it was important. Why is it sparking? It's an unsolvable mystery, best not worry about it. I'm starting to feel like maybe Shinji's uh, destructiveness has something to do with the fact that he's going to be left behind. Really kind of has this uh, sort of, uh, I thought, <laughs> I thought we were closer than that, you know? I thought we would, uh, thought you might save me kind of vibe to it. Unfortunately, I appear not to have been given that option at any point. I wonder how the marshals feel about their impending non-existence. If you want to live, stay back. Oh, I guess they're still doing their jobs endlessly. Mere automata serving the systems. With the world in which they dwell. But what about the dog, though? Is anyone going to make sure that the dog gets back to safety, or is this going to be an entry in doesthedogdie.com? Oh, I guess we just callously abandon the dog to its fate. I suppose on a perfect island there must be perfect dogs. Better than this tragically flawed dog. Huh? 
Oh. Hi Crimson, how are you feeling? Lady's back in town. You got your gun back. Justice has been served and the PPU will be reborn on Perfect 25. I've got a favor to ask. I'm not surprised. You need people for the Paradise Psycho unit, right? You want to be on the team? I'm the glamour of the battlefield and I have a good stock of secrets. Hell yeah. You're hired. I want a corner office. Fine by me. Did you need something before the end of the island, boss? I'll see you on the next island, Crimson. Sure thing, lady. I'm kind of wondering what would happen if I just went around and murdered them all. Is that just an option they've given me for funsies? Or is there a mystery here that I could perhaps yet solve? Lady Love Dice has expressed sympathies very frequently with the uh, citizen class. Which is kind of interesting if you consider that I am perhaps unable to talk to Henry. Or perhaps unable to save Henry. It seems so callous and cruel that he should be abandoned to die with the island, even after he's proved innocent. He was manipulated all the way down. Is this a final point about the awfulness of the society in which they live, and Lady Love Dies' complicity in it? Because she's kind of just been given everything she's wanted. Obviously you can tell stories about bad people who are bad, but this once again feels kind of like just yet another oversight. Yet, yet another kind of failure for the game devs to think about things. Although, maybe, uh, maybe Henry will have some pithy comments for us regarding it. That was quite a fucking show. I'm amazed I'm still here. You were scapegoated, I was just doing my job. I appreciate it. That's the first time someone stood up for me. I spent my entire life adrift, the world happened around me and I moved between currents. Nothing I did was ever good enough. Nothing ever worked. No one wanted me. But you believed in the truth, thank you. You can't leave this island. I'm just a shit-munching citizen. There's a load more for you to abduct for the next island, right? I've got a demon in me. Can't have that in your precious new island, can you? Goodbye, Henry. What fucking ever. It's weird that he thanks you and then spins on a dime and is angry at you. He, why isn't he just angry? Like, great, okay, you proved me innocent. So, so fucking what? It's exactly the same as if I was executed with this crime. There is zero difference. Like... Man, this, mm, there's something here, but I'm, I'm too many cocktails in to, to verbalize it properly right now. I... Hi, Future Tessa here. As always, the person onto whom my past self offloads the rather less fun labors, such as editing, in favor of actually getting to play games. You may recall me from the many pop-up images in these videos where I am consistently funnier and more insightful than that bitch past Tessa. The point I was reaching for here is that this fits into a trope or pattern from narratives where a protagonist is a privileged member of society who ultimately reinforces the cruel and exploitative status quo of that society to the detriment of whatever token characters represent its underclasses, but is then absolved of that complicity by those characters who thank them for at least caring. This is very common in propagandist media like cop shows, where it serves to reassure the viewer that their own complicity in the structures of exploitative power around them can be forgiven because at least they think the right thoughts, even if their actions make zero meaningful difference to the situation of said underclass. Paradise Killer is intended to be an allegorical work critical of our society, but its writing is not sophisticated and frequently uses tropes and concepts without thinking through their implications or attempting to tie them into the intentionally stated themes. I believe this to be an example of that phenomenon rather than any attempt to make a point about LLD's complicity in this society. Its purpose is rather, as I put it previously, to absolve a likeable protagonist of their complicity and therefore allow the audience to continue to project onto them. This interacts with another flaw in the game, its inability to decide whether the protagonist is a character in her own right or merely an avatar of the player, an issue regarding which I'll go into more detail later. Future Tessa out. Really think it feels like just kind of arbitrary decisions made by the writers choosing not to think about it too much or have some kind of a satisfying further thing. <sighs> Man. On the other hand, Actually, no, that's bullshit. I was going to say, you know, we all exist in these systems that very often we can't manipulate, so ultimately, yeah, I guess there is nothing she can do, but that's not true. She is one of the only people in this society with the power 
to change things. She's one of the only surviving leaders of this society, and she's just been granted carte, granted carte blanche to handle justice. Yeah. There's not even a, an attempt, not even an attempt to save him, just a total callous disregard for his life. And I think the game positions it as the unfortunate, inescapable inevitability, but you know what? She makes the fucking rules now. That really leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like, if she was just like... If she, if she was honest about it, or if the writers were honest about taking a path with a, a protagonist who is just honestly not going to do that because she believes in her terrible society or whatever, then that would be fine, but it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a total abdication of the responsibility to think about it. By, ex by executing Aikiko, you've destroyed any hope of Perfect 25. At least try to redeem yourself by executing the true murderer. You mean Henry? Of course. You may have tricked Judge into believing Akiko was guilty, but you'll never convince us. Now execute Henry before this island shuts down. He doesn't deserve to see its magnificent end. Bro, you don't deserve to see my magnificent end. Anyway. Are you happy with your truths? This feels wrong. The truth still slithers in the grass. You are an instrument of justice now. You can execute justice however you like. Make use of it. My time on this island is at an end. Enjoy Perfect 25, Investigator, if you can. I can't tell if this is the game telling me that I've missed something. I can't tell if this is the game telling me that there's... that there is some final secret, that there is some piece of evidence that I've missed, but I've... I mean, you, you all watched me crisscross the island. There's not a place I haven't been. There's not a stone I haven't turned. There's literally n nothing else. Except, of course, that this place's whole existence is a horrible crime against humanity, really. So that really leaves no other option. Or maybe that's always there to make you wonder if you did it right. Maybe in the post-game sequence you always get this question of, did you do it right? Why do things feel weird? Or maybe they feel weird because we're still just living in this horrible place amongst these horrible people. Perhaps Love Dies eyes have been opened to some extent about the cruelty of this society and she'll attempt to change it from within on the next island, which is always a little bit of a little bit of a lacking response as things go. Anyway, I think we've spoken to everyone we can speak to, apart from Judge, now that I realise it, so let's head back to Judge and find out what Judge's final thoughts are. Well, Judge, Paradise is indebted to you. No matter what truth you made, you believed in Paradise. I hope that we will never have to work together again. I hope that crime can be eradicated and Paradise can be perfect. Once again, I have no idea if this rhetoric reflects a conception in the minds of the of the writers uh, of the ability to wipe out crime, because as 20 episodes ago I went on that lengthy monologue about the, the nature of the conception of crime, um, and the game's refusal to kind of explain what it means when it says crime. That's an unrealistic dream. Crime infects every society. You see what I mean? Are these people all fascists or just as nobody thought about the consequences of their words? You're right. The Syndicate's way of governing is flawed. It always will be. I look forward to working with you again. Truth will always need an investigator and a judge. When you have finished executing justice, please move to the next island. Which I guess it's now time to do. There's nobody else to talk to? The seas are turning red with blood, the crows are falling from the sky. I think probably it's time to book it. And fall into a ravine. This is actually one of my favourite tracks on the game's uh, OST. So it feels kind of nice to just let it pulse away in the background while we sprint through the rest of the city. The last inhabitant of a dying world running towards our only way out. Of course, it'll wait as long as we need it to. The vibes, man. The vibes. 
that at least this game had in droves. Well, here's the only car in the world. Let's blow this popsicle stand. With Lydia gone, I guess I need to drive out of here. Is it time to go? Time to get out of here. Closing Island Sequence 24 applications. Ready for Island Sequence 25. Woof! Oh, you're coming along too, are you? Ah, so the dog does not die. Good to know. Woof woof. Okay then, in the car. Perfect 25 awaits. A new island, a new council. The syndicate has been changed forever. Has it? It kind of sounds like they're going to continue doing all of the terrible things they've been doing. Facts and truth. Truth and facts. Paradise needed saving, but was it worth it? Was it saved? I breathed life back into paradise. Time for Perfect 25. I can't help but wonder if there's another ending to this game where you choose to construct things in such a way that you bring down this entire society, but I, I don't know how that would be done given the systems that it's presented to me. I'm gonna miss love dies. We could have had something special. Nothing brings people together like the impending obliteration of a pocket of reality. Still, at least the case of the Paradise Killer got her out of exile. I wonder if her truths were right. I guess I'll never know. I hope Perfect 25 was worth it. Obviously, I hope they all die in a fire, but for their sakes, I hope they enjoy it. I've only known humans for a short amount of time, but they all seem to be idiots that only work for themselves. I'm sure they'll fuck it up nicely. Anyway, time to watch reality die. There's no room for an in-depth critical analysis during the credits, that is usually what the preceding Let's Play is for, so in short, I think Paradise Killer is a great idea executed poorly and let down by uninspired writing. Its themes aren't integrated in what it is supposedly trying to say, its character writing is frankly boring, and even its esoteric weirdness is by the numbers. It's supposedly an allegory for flaws in our own society, a critique of capitalism according to the developers, but in that it fails. It focuses solely on the doings and cares of the most privileged in its society, buying into its own depiction of the underclass as downtrodden fetish objects unable to do anything other than moulder in their own misery, and then it mechanically requires us to do the same. It could be argued that we are meant to infer the system is harmful even to those who benefit from it, note the daybreaks, but in all honesty the narrative does not want to confront the monstrousness of its society. It simply states it and then goes back to the fun questions of demons and lordly matters. The entirety of its plot is irrelevant to anyone but the privileged. This might underscore the alternative reading, namely that these people are all monumental assholes and we're supposed to be made uncomfortable by the dissonance between our narrative encouraged liking for them and the inescapable sin of their continued existence, but frankly it's not that deep. It's a story with some cool space wizards and a fun murder plot, and a million exonerating details ensuring us that it is okay to like the ones we do like. Did you notice that all of the ones written as petty dicks turn out to be willful murderers invested in this society, and those written to be likeable all turn out to be at worst useful idiots uncomfortable with benefiting from Murderland? Silent Goat forbid we include a turnaround, an upset, a traitor, or even a single red herring. What you see is just what you get. It also falls into a common game-making trap in not deciding whether its protagonist is a character we are watching or simply a cipher for the players themselves. The tension between those positions can be exploited cleverly and has been in other works, but Paradise Killer doesn't want to. A game can be a narrative collaboration between the designer and the player, but in Paradise Killer we're neither free to build our own characterization, nor do we get to watch someone else paint a striking portrait. Most of all, I'm frustrated at the lack of any kind of real deduction mechanics. Events simply progress automatically based on what information you've uncovered. This is the least interesting way to solve an admittedly very difficult problem in detective game design, the allowance for the game to react to the player performing deductive reasoning and experiencing intuitive leaps. While this could be forgiven during the game as a whole, it deeply undercuts the climax, which becomes a simple reading out of every fact you've ever found, punctured by occasional unasked-for confessions. There's not even a character who maintains their innocence despite proven guilt to leave you with a bad taste in your mouth over having possibly made a mistake. To tie all of this back into the brief critique of this narrative I gave a moment ago, we are encouraged to feel good for doing a good job, with no room to question whether we've ever actually done the right thing, and no attempt to encourage introspection as to what the right thing even is. It simply does not lay the groundwork for the second of my aforementioned readings. 
All of that aside, it is a delightful place to wander around in, and there is absolutely space for games that simply provide an aesthetic experience. The vibes here, at least, are delicious. Way of Blood Bar, 25th Island Sequence. Haha. <laughs> so that's how it ended. A weird turn of events. The strangest paradise yet. Is this paradise safe? Of course it isn't. This is the syndicate we're talking about. Will we need her again? We always will. She's the only one that can save paradise. A little bit of a sequel hook there, I suppose. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this odyssey, it's been a wild ride. This let's play was only ever meant to last a couple of months, but became uncomfortably stretched out by how unwell I was all last year. I do wonder if I'd feel as negatively as I do about it if I had simply played it for myself over a couple of weekends, but on the other hand, Paradise Killer will stick with me for a long time, and I don't know that it would have if I'd simply blasted through it and declared it mid. I'm actually going to miss Paradise Island 24 and its inhabiting shower of dickheads, especially Shinji. I might even play a sequel. Anyway, I hope you'll join me for my next Let's Play series coming very soon, or maybe even check out some of my others. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.